camera is really neat. He is filled with turtle meat. We all love you, camera. The show era gamer films ranged from okay to just downright terrible in terms of quality. The final film, Super Monster Gamera, sealed the character away for 15 years for how lazily bad it was. Daiei planned to again revive the series in 1995 to commemorate the 30th anniversary of Gamera, and if their last attempt taught them anything, they had to step up their game and not cut so many corners. And my god, they did just that. Not only did they properly reintroduce the character to modern audiences, but they also created some of the best and beloved kaiju films in history. Gone were the goofy effects, non-existent storylines, and most importantly, the horrible child actors that plagued the early entries. Thank God. It truly felt like Godzilla actually had competition, even if the movies weren't really competing like that at the time. Starting with Gamera, Guardian of the Universe in 1995, directed by Shusuke Kaneko and is the ninth Gamera film in total. The movie reintroduces Gauss, a race of them in fact, from an ancient civilization who hatch from their longtime slumber and begin feeding on humanity. Gamera is accidentally awakened from his rest and reacts his role as Defender of the Universe by fighting off the Gauss. Both creatures are actually created by a race of superhumans called the Atlanteans, who created Gauss at first to defend their home from a serpent creature called Garasharp, but then turn on their own creators afterwards. To counter them, the Atlanteans created a horde of giant super turtle to defend them, and that's only a taste of the lore. There is so much great stuff to these creatures' origins compared to the Showa counterparts, who I don't even think get an explanation other than Gamera's origins are somewhat similar to that of this one. The human cast is great. Not perfect, mind you, but I did enjoy most of their company. I like both Yoshinari and Mayumi's determination to figure out more on the creatures and both take any actions when necessary. Inspector Osaka is more the comic relief of the movie. He's got some funny one-liners that did make me laugh here and there. Asagi was okay. She felt a little odd to me in this one. She receives a Magatama which links her spirit to Gamera in some way which does help him in the fight, and I do like that about her. Maybe she'll grow on me in the later movies. The kaiju are great. I love the redesigns of both Gamera and Gauss. The Gamera suit is a nice touch-up from the lifeless husk in the last entries, with a personality of actually defending everyone and not just children. At least that's how I thought the old one acted. I never understood completely if Showa Gamera would actually save all of mankind and not just kids, it never was really clear. Gauss was done from a combination of both suitmation, props, and puppeteer work. I love the close-up shots of the faces. These things actually look crazy with a sense to just kill anything that moves in their eyes. Effects work blends nicely with the live action segments. Shinji Higuchi, before directing Shin Godzilla, was the effects director of the Heisei trilogy, and one whom does an outstanding job at that. Though there is one thing when re-watching this I kind of felt was a little bad. It's the ground battle with Gamera and Gauss. Granted, it doesn't last too long, but wow does this not look good. Thankfully, most of the fighting takes place in either the air or shown in more interesting angles. Music by Kao Awatani is also pretty dang good, especially Gamera's main theme which gives the turtle a sense of something to be feared with a small touch of heroism sprinkled in there. Ten times better than the goofy Gamera themes of the past. Also, the ending theme song, The Myth, performed by Bakufu Slump, is one of the best original songs done for a kaiju film. For copyright reasons, I can't play it, but believe me when I say it's a good song. This film's an example of a reboot done right. Made by passionate people who love the genre, taking a franchise that wasn't really all that great, and made it into something to remember for all time. Which I feel more studios should do, rather than just make shitty remakes and reboots to franchises that don't need them. The huge and rightful success of the movie sparked a sequel a year after, as Gamera 2 Attack of the Legion. This one I've seen the least amount of times in the Heisei trilogy. Not because I think it's a bad film, far from it. It's only because I never owned the DVD of it back then. I still have my old ADV film copies of both the first and third movies, 
but I could never find the second one anywhere. Granted, I didn't have an income back then, and when it came to asking my folks to get a movie offline, I would much rather ask for a video game or Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I did eventually get the Blu-ray, and I did watch it one time, and I don't really remember much of it. The movie's about an alien race known as the Legion, who come to Earth and plan to colonize and conquer the planet. Of course, Gamera doesn't like that, so he and the human characters try to fight back against the insect-like creatures. Now, I'm gonna say as my second viewing of the film, I liked it a lot, but not as much as its predecessor. I believe just about everyone who worked on Guardian came back for this one. With that said, they definitely improved greatly on the monster action. There's not one fight like that single laughably bad brawl in Guardian, thankfully. Yes, they do close combat here and there, but it's choreographed in a much more appealing way. Legion is one of the most impressive looking kaiju I've ever bared witness to. The computer effects combined with the practical ones are some of the best and unique looking combinations done for a kaiju suit to date. Speaking of effects, all the practical stuff is top notch here again, and for the first time in the franchise, CGI is used. Though I believe it was used in Guardian, I'm not too sure. It's used to much fuller effect in Legion, and it hasn't aged all that well. Hell, I think even for its time it wasn't all that great. Thankfully, there's not too many moments like these. The characters are okay. I don't remember them all that much, but they weren't bad. Some characters from Guardian appear here, like Osako, who is now a security guard at a brewery rather than a police inspector. Mayumi Nagamin also has a small cameo in a book she wrote about the Gauss. And Asagi returns as well, but she doesn't really get to do much of anything in the movie. And that's the thing, I can't help but feel she was just shoehorned in the picture just because she still had the Magatama which binds her with Gamera. Even though at the end of Guardian she claimed she couldn't feel Gamera's strength anymore, but whatever, the thing's destroyed now. Overall, this movie takes a step up while taking one down. The Gauss in the first film had some kind of past with Gamera and the Atlanteans, and I loved all that history about them. Legion, while cool looking, is just your typical extraterrestrial creature who wants to conquer Earth. Alien invasions have been done many times before, and even Godzilla recently did one at the time. And there's nothing wrong with that, it's fun and great, but the Atlantean stuff with Gauss was just a lot more interesting to me. I also can't help but feel the movie was trying to aim itself toward a younger crowd again. There is one scene where all the children are coming together hoping for Gamer's return after he gets defeated. It might have just been an homage to the Showa era, but then you got the ending song called Sky. And regardless, even if they were aiming that route, this is still a damn good movie that's worth checking out. The next movie, Gamma Revenge of Iris, didn't come out right away like most kaiju sequels did at the time. It released in early March of 1999 and would be the finale of director Kaneko's Heisei trilogy. The movie stars a young girl named Ayana Hirasaka, whom from an attack in the first movie lost her parents to Gamma, who crushed her home with them still inside it. She, along with her younger brother, are taken in by a family who lives in a small village, and while there, she comes across an ancient shrine which has a weird creature inside called Iris, a name she got from her cat who also lost its life to Gamera. Also, the Gauss are back, and now they're infesting the planet. Gamera must not only fight off the hordes of Gauss, but he must now fight the mighty Iris as well. Okay, so you remember how we said the last movie was more of a light-hearted one? Well, this one takes a complete 180 on that. This is definitely the most darkest and dour film of the franchise. There's a lot of moody moments, and weird ones at that. There are moments when Gamera's battling the other monsters, and we actually see people getting killed. It's something we really don't get to see a lot in kaiju movies, or at least not to this extent. On that, Gamera is also rocking a new look, and he's never been as menacing as he does in this film. I mean, damn, look how sharp he looks. There's even another suit used for Hirasaka's nightmares. And tell me this thing won't give you some of your own. Ho oh, ho shit. Some past characters make a return, like Shinobu Nakayama repraising her role as Mayumi, who's charming in every scene she's in. Sako, who went from inspector, to security guard, to now bum on the streets. I really liked his character in the first movie, which kind of makes me sad to see him like this here. And finally, Asagi, who's been studying more on Gamera and his origins for the past years. There's some other new characters here, and I really didn't care for any of them. CGI is used a lot more in this movie. A standout moment is the sky battle with Gamera and Iris toward the end. Yeah, it doesn't look convincing, but it's so freaking cool you just gotta forgive it for how awesome it looks. 
The Heisei Trilogy would go on to be recognized as some of the best kaiju movies in existence, and I definitely agree with that statement. Director Kanko said he would have made a fourth film if the movie reached a certain goal at the box office, which unfortunately didn't happen. An unofficial fourth movie was made, and sadly at this time it's unaccessible to view. Which is a shame since I'm very curious to know how this bulky gamma suit would have played out. An official fourth movie would be made, but it would be a standalone picture disconnected from anything that came before. Titled Gamer the Brave, released in 2006 and directed by Ryota Tasaki. The film was made to commemorate the franchise's 40th anniversary and would return the character back to his more lighthearted roots. Sadly, this is a movie I don't hear get talked about at all, which is a shame considering this is a decently good flick. The film starts in 1973 where a very old looking Gamera is battling a group of Gauss. He sacrifices himself to destroy them all and bring peace back to the earth. 30 years afterward, a small boy named Taru finds a baby turtle he calls Toto, and quickly finds out he's no ordinary reptile. A mysterious creature named Zidas appears and starts wreaking havoc overseas, and eventually comes to land where we find out he's got a craving for people. Toto, now giant sized battles the mutated lizard in a fight to save his friend Taru and the rest of mankind. This film I've been wanting to see for a long time now, and I'm glad to finally have a reason to pop this on and watch it. And it did not disappoint. I really liked a lot of things from this movie. The bond between Taro and Toto I thought was cute, Zetus as a kaiju looks amazing, effects work is debatably the best the series has ever looked, which I should note that this was the first and currently only Gamera movie to be shot digitally, which definitely helped make a lot of the composite shots work well. The human cast was great, or surprisingly should I say the kids were, with the exception of maybe Taro's dad I guess. Every adult character in this movie was just not great to watch. So yeah, a Gamera movie where kids didn't annoy the hell out of me. It took 11 movies, but better late than never I guess. All the monsters look fantastic in the picture. And I know some people say Toto looks a little on the cute side, but I kinda like that aspect because it gives him more of a vulnerable appearance when battling Zetas, which just makes us root for him more. Definitely the polar opposite to any monster fighting Gamera in the last movie. I mean, has Gamera ever looked more powerful than that? Speaking of, I'm glad director Tazaki didn't try to imitate what came before. Yeah, I know this movie was paying more of an homage to the Showa era, but none of those films worked as well as this one does. It also didn't try to copy Kaneko's trilogy, which, let's be honest, is the more definitive set of gamer films. It's its own thing and I think it works better like that. Now for some gripes. And really there are only two things that come to mind. One is Gamer's Roar. Instead we got these stock roars from various monster movies including that of the 70s Kong. Like why? Could you imagine if a Godzilla movie came out and the big G had a roar like a lion? I don't understand it, but it is what it is. My second complaint, okay, there's a moment when Toto and Zetas are fighting in the city and there's this montage of young kids, unsupervised, all running toward the action to try and get Toto some kind of gem. How and why they're all doing this, I don't know. It's a moment I thought was a bit much. Sadly, this movie did not perform well at the box office and most likely due to its failure that Katakawa never wanted to make another one. Yeah, to date, this is the last movie of the franchise, and as far as I know, there's been no plans to ever make another one. Well, kind of. In 2015, to celebrate the 50th anniversary, we got a 4 minute short film. Yeah, Godzilla got a crazy action packed film for his 50th anniversary, and Gamera got 4 minutes of our time. I'm gonna talk more about this short in an upcoming video, so I'll let it be for now. To wrap up this video, I'm gonna rank these movies in four separate categories. Not counting the short, there's an even number of 12 movies, so let's put three movies in each section. Starting with the worst movies in my opinion being Super Monster Gamera, Gamera vs Zigra, and vs Jiger. Though I don't think Jiger is as bad as the other two, it's still not a very good movie to watch. Just avoid these unless you really must watch them. Section 3, the films that aren't terrible per se, but I would only recommend these to people who generally love kaiju movies. These are Gamma vs. Giron, Gamma vs. Virus, and surprisingly the original. Section 2 are decently enjoyable movies that kept my interest fully through, 
with little hiccups here and there, but still some good movies that deserve a watch if you get the chance. Them being Gamma vs. Barugan, Gamma vs. Gauss, and Gamma the Brave. And finally, the best section. Movies I believe that can be enjoyed by a wider audience that don't necessarily have to be into kaiju films to enjoy. That being the Kaneko Trilogy. Yeah, don't be too surprised to see that these are here. After all, if famed film critic Roger Ebert can enjoy them, I don't know who that is. Then I'm sure most people can enjoy them as well. And that about wraps up all the movies. But there's more gamer to be had. So next time I'll be looking into something that you probably don't associate the turtle with all that much. I hope you all look forward to it, and thank you so much for watching. あなたをリスクから守るのは三井住友海上の GK。気にしないで。みんなガムラに守ってほしいんだ。僕は断然堀北さんの GK だな。三井住友海上の GK シリーズ出てきなよ。<笑>